From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Oxford AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine will only be given to people between 18 and 65, though this may change. As scientific studies about the effectiveness of the vaccine in the over 65 population are reviewed, the announcement was made by Dr. Mersaline Dal Regis, head of the COVID-19 Vaccine National Consultative Committee. With this plan, the Bahamas joins a number of European countries that have not made the vaccine available to people older than 65, the age grouping most vulnerable to COVID-19's risks. Speaking during a press conference, Dr. Dal Regis said, quote, we have a choice. At this time, prior to this afternoon's release of additional data, we had decided that we will vaccinate 18 to 65-year-olds and older than 65, that's 28,000, such a small population that we will hold off on that group. Given the new literature, we have to review the data and we really need rather than rely on press releases of science scientific data to have an opportunity to look at the published data that has gone under peer review. Dr. Dal Regis could not say exactly when the vaccine will arrive in the country, noting that the promised 100,000 doses could come in two tranches as opposed to all at once. Two Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute staff members have been fired for stealing following an independent investigation by its board of directors. According to a statement yesterday, the thefts were restricted to the two employees and were not part of a larger criminal operation. The BTVI confirmation of the sackings failed to say if criminal charges were being filed against the employees. The investigation also exonerated a senior staff member who was subjected to claims circulated in a flyer that accused the person of being the leader of a theft ring. The Flyer said two employees were fired, but the senior staff member remained without consequence. In an interview with the Tribune last week, BTVI chairman Kevin Basden did not confirm if the employees were fired, but advised that an investigation into malfeasance at the institution was ongoing. House Speaker Halson Moutry resigned from the Free National Movement yesterday in a shock move, insisting his personal convictions collided with continued affiliation with that organization. The Nassau Village MP has been at odds with his party for some time, amid complaints from him about the state of his office and frequent calls for Parliament to be autonomous. He said in a press release, quote, My patriotic and not-to-be-compromised conviction on fundamental essentials of democracy and good governance, such as the separation of powers, autonomy, and independence of the legislature and and judiciary, accountability and transparency, freedom of information and respect for constitution makes my continued affiliation and association divergent and untenable. The letter dated February 4th solidified with immediate effect a formal end to what Mr. Mutri called his seven-month constructive withdrawal from the FNM. He thanked his constituents, saying he was grateful for the overwhelming confidence reposed in him and asked for their continued cooperation in these troubled times. After protesting several times this week over overtime pay concerns, Bahamas Nurses Union President Amancha Williams said nurses were finally able to meet the Prime Minister yesterday, who she says promised to ensure the payments are made even if it comes out of his own salary. Nurses' protests came as the country is preparing to receive COVID-19 vaccines and begin its vaccination process, with the essential workers needed to carry out the jabs. Yesterday, Ms. Williams told the Tribune that if the money is not paid as promised, it may negatively affect the vaccine vaccination process. This comes after nurses in the Department of Public Health continued their protests at the office of the Prime Minister, demanding to speak with Dr. Minnis after he evaded the nurses as they demonstrated outside of Parliament on Wednesday. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, President Joe Biden laid out the case today for moving fast and without Republicans, if necessary, to pass $1.9 trillion in coronavirus relief, armed with new signs of economic strain brought on by the continuing pandemic. The stakes for the country and economy were amplified on Friday morning, shortly after Senate Democrats cast a decisive vote to muscle the plan through the chamber without Republican support, a step toward final approval next month. January's jobs report showed hiring had stalled to a pace that could hinder a return to full employment for several years, with 406,000 people choosing to leave the labor force as deaths from the pandemic surged. 
Jamaica is running low on ganja. Heavy rains followed by an extended drought, an increase in local consumption, and a drop in the number of marijuana farmers have caused a shortage in the island's famed but largely illegal market that experts say is the worst they've seen. It's a cultural embarrassment, said Tristan Thompson, chief opportunity explorer for Takea, a consulting and brokerage firm for the country's nascent legal cannabis industry. Jamaica, which foreigners have long associated with pot, reggae, and Rastafarians, authorized a regulated medical marijuana industry and decriminalized small amounts of weed in 2015. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A ridge of high pressure produces stable weather conditions over the islands, along with moderate to fresh breezes as it gradually shifts eastwards. There remains the moderate risk of rip currents, especially along the eastern shorelines in the southeast Bahamas. For all areas, it'll be mostly sunny and warm, but a bit breezy, with a little more clouds in the southeast Bahamas, fair and cool tonight. A small craps caution is in effect for the southeast Bahamas. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots over open waters in the northwest and central Bahamas, but falling light and variable tonight and east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots in the southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean in the northwest and central Bahamas and 4 to 7 feet in the southeast Bahamas in slight northeasterly swells. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 79 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 59. The sun will set at 556 and will rise tomorrow morning at 650. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at tribune242.com.